Hello, thank you for stopping by. My name is Becky and this is Bex Reads and today I'm going to share with you my rating system. I do use a six star rating system. Uh, I started using a six star rating system back in 2012. I read a very specific book and I enjoyed it so much that I figured it needed its own rating. So thus began the six star system. For the longest time I used Goodreads so I just used your standard one to five and if it was a six star I just rated it a five star. I have since left Goodreads and went to Storygraph so now I include half star points as well. A one and a 1.5 star rating is a very rare occurrence for me. I could probably count on both hands, maybe even one hand, the number of books that I have given one and 1.5 star in my lifetime. This occurred much more at the beginning of my reading life when I reviewed books for publishers and authors and I felt obligated to finish the books that I had agreed to review and so if I give a book a 1 or a 1.5 star I forced myself to finish it for some reason. It was either because I had to do a review for it or I was part of like a book club or something and I pushed myself to finish it. What separates a book from a one star and a 1.5 star is a one star I literally could not think of one single thing I enjoyed about the book. Nothing at all. The only reason it got a one star is because I didn't DNF it and so I can rate it something. However, if I give something a 1.5 star, there is often at least two small, small things that I can say that I found to enjoy about it. Usually, this includes, hey, I liked the cover. <laughs> and if I liked the cover, I can usually give it at least that extra 0.5 star. Or it can be something like, I liked this trope in it, or I liked this character aspect, or I liked the setting choice. It's such a small thing. But overall, cannot stand the characters, cannot stand the story, forced myself to finish it but I was able to find at least something to enjoy that gave it that extra 0.5. So for a 2 and a 2.5 star rating, these are books that usually it's like once a month I give a book a 2 or a 2.5. Not every month, but most months it happens. And these are books that I can at least list two things that I like about it. And you will see that that is how I often go about choosing my rating, is I can list off the things I like and list off the things I don't, and then sort of weigh which outweighs them. So I can usually list two things I like. However, the biggest factor in giving a book a 2 or a 2.5 is I didn't like the characters. And if I don't like the characters who are the main factor of a story, it will get two stars for me usually. These are books that I would never recommend because I just did not enjoy them. The only thing that separates a book from a 2 to a 2.5 star is there's usually at least three things that I can say I like in a 2.5 star book. It's just the things that I dislike heavily outweigh it. There's usually like a list of four plus things that I disliked about that book, but I still didn't enjoy the characters. So it's just that very small nuance thing that me personally, I can figure out if it's a two or a 2.5. Three star ratings is where the majority of my books tend to lie. So I don't think a three star book is necessarily a bad book. I am enjoying it while I'm reading it. I don't have to force my way through it. I'm enjoying the story. I'm enjoying the plot. There's tropes that I like. However, they're often forgettable books. There's something about the characters I don't like and there's usually a lot of plot points or tropes that I also dislike. But when I give a book a three star, it's usually because there is at least three things that I can list that I like about it and there's usually about three to four things that I can list that I disliked about it. So it sort of evens it out. The only thing that separates a three star from a 3.5 is usually with a 3.5 star book, there's something very unique about that story that I find enjoyable. And I will often recommend 3.5 star books because even though I didn't like it, I find it to be a really unique story that I think other people might enjoy. Now we get into the 4 and 4.5 star rating. So these are books that I definitely recommend. A 4 star book, I can at least list 4 things that I like about it. And of these 4 things, the character is one of them. I liked something about this character. However, when I'm making the list of things I like versus things I dislike, there's often at least one or two things that I disliked that outweigh it. So it gets that four star rating. Four stars, however, aren't necessarily books that I would reread. 
The only thing separating a 4 to a 4.5 is usually when I give books 4.5, it's that there's at least five things that I can say that I like about a book. Originally, I had said there were four to five things I could find that I didn't like to give a book a 4.5 star rating. What I meant to say was there's at least one to two things that I can find that I disliked about a book to give it that 4.5 star rating. Now we get into the five star ratings, and I do not do 5.5 star. I do a five, and then I move on to the six star. A five-star book is something that I absolutely loved. I will always recommend it, and I can list at least five things that I like about that book, including I loved the characters. Now, sometimes I do have five-star books that I can list at least five plus things I like about it, but sometimes there's at least like one or two small things that I disliked about it. Like I didn't like the setting or I didn't like this certain character's attitude or something like that. So they're not big enough things to detract an entire star rating from, but it's what keeps it from getting like a six star rating from me. But again, it's just that if I like five or more things about it, but I dislike a couple things about it, then it gets a five star. But these are things that I think I genuinely will reread at some point in my life, and they are things that I will always recommend to people. They are things that stand out in my brain, and they're things that I feel a strong connection to. Now, my six star reads, these are the books that I am obsessed with. I will not shut up about these books. When I am determining a six star book, the main factor is, did it pull a strong emotion? from me? Did it make me cry? Did it make me laugh? Did it make me horny? Did it make me angry? Did it make me tense? Anything like that. If I experienced a strong visceral reaction to this story, chances are it will get six stars for me. I can also, in my listing, there's usually at least six plus things I like about a book. There have been some six star books where I can list at least six plus things I liked about it, but maybe there's like three things I didn't like about it that are small things that I could overlook, but it gave me that visceral reaction. So anything I give a six star, I have had a strong emotional reaction to that story. I don't think there's a six star book that I've read that I haven't had that reaction to, and that is what tips it over the edge into that six star rating. As you can see from my star ratings, it's not a system that everybody could use. It's based mainly on my own enjoyment of the book, and I list off the things I like and the things I didn't like. And these can be shallow things to, hey, I like this trope, to I like the cover, I think it's a beautifully designed book, things like that. I don't go into it too much with a critical view unless it's something that really irks me and then I'm like nitpicking it. But my rating is simply mine. Now let me share with you my pepper rating because I do have a one to four pepper rating based on the smut level of a book. So I give half a pepper for oral scenes, heavy petting scenes, if there's suggested scenes where they're just not using the crude wording and the in-depth details of what's going on in the situation, that will get a half a pepper. For every penetrative scene, it doesn't matter what kind of penetrative, as long as it isn't oral, I will give that one pepper. So if a book has four or more peppers, that means that there are at least four open door penetrative sex scenes within that story. If a book has more than that in a story, it still gets four peppers because I'm only going up to four. Like I'm not going to count every single scene after four. If I'm reading like a young adult novel, Typically, it'll get like zero to maybe one pepper at most because sometimes with upper YA books, they do have that suggested scene where you can tell what's happening. They're just not using all the words and it's a very short scene. And recently, I developed a chemistry scale as well because sometimes I will be reading a heavy, heavy smut book but I just not feeling the chemistry. And so I wanted to incorporate that into my reviews of, hey, this has a lot of smut, but I didn't necessarily feel their chemistry sort of thing. So I have a one to four chemistry beaker system. And this is a system that again, is strictly for me because it's a feeling thing. I can't actually give you anything to measure this by other than what I feel for these characters. How I measure characters chemistry and how I think their chemistry feels is going to be completely different from somebody else who reads the same exact book because they might have a more emotional connection and they might feel that chemistry even stronger. So how I quantify chemistry between characters is strictly for me. <laughs> So I'm going to explain this from four beakers to one beakers because it's easier for me to explain why I give certain couples four beakers 
it's very difficult for me to verbally explain why I give them one. When I give couples four beakers worth of chemistry, it's because I have a visceral reaction. This will usually tie into that six star rating or that five star rating. I feel their sadness. I cry with them. I laugh with them. I get horny with them. I get angry with them. Things like that. I am that character and I feel what they are feeling. So I give them four beakers. When I give three beakers of chemistry, it's because it's strong. I can feel it. I can sense it. However, it's not strong enough to the point that I'm crying with them. I'm laughing with them, you know? So it's there. And on page, they look good. They have good chemistry. It just isn't enough for me to have that visceral reaction to them. When I give them two beakers of chemistry, it's because it's good chemistry. They're a good couple together. However, there are things that I just don't understand about their relationship. Like, I don't understand why you're attracted to this. I don't understand why y'all are still together. There's something about their chemistry that irks me. But for the majority of their story, they have a solid chemistry foundation. And I can understand their chemistry. When I give couples a one chemistry beaker, it means that I'm just reading the book and I can see that the author wants them to have chemistry and I might feel it occasionally. There might be little snippets in the book where I feel that connection, but for the most part, I don't. And if I give something zero beakers, it's because I feel no chemistry at all. I don't understand how these two could be attracted to each other and I just, it's dry. I'm just reading the story and I'm just like, how? Are you two supposed to be together because there's no magic for me? So let me know down in the comments, do you use a certain rating scale? Do you go 1 to 5, 1 to 6, 1 to 10? Do you use Caw Pile? I know that's a pretty popular one. Where do you rate your books? Do you rate them on Goodreads, Storygraph, Amazon, anything like that? Let me know. And if you've made it this far in the video, could you leave me the star emoji so that I know you're here if you don't have anything else to say? And until my next video, thank you guys so much for watching and go think about your star ratings. Bye.